So, Premier, straightforward question. Will you be introducing a carbon tax on hard-working Ontario families before 2018? Yes or no? Well, Mr. Here. Speaker, what we, are, what we are focused on is making sure that we do everything in our power to grow the economy, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if that was an answer, actually. Uh, she's very assertive about her non-answers, the Premier of Ontario. I just asked Rebecca Thompson for a 2015 prediction. Didn't have to ask Lori Goldstein. He's already made one. Ontario gets a carbon tax. Or, or some form of carbon pricing. I mean, they're being cute. Uh, you know, like sometimes they say, well, not a carbon tax. Well, okay, then you're talking about cap and trade. Which What's the difference? It, they're, both, they're both taxes on carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. And yeah, I think, I think it'll be this year for a number of reasons. Uh, one, they need the money. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, like the, the Auditor General said, even if you balance the budget by 7, 2017, 2018, you're still going to be $325 billion in debt, $23,000 for every man, woman, and child. Taxing carbon dioxide emissions is very profitable for governments. It raises the cost of almost everything because you're, you're essentially taxing energy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so gasoline will go up. Um, uh, uh, home heating oil will go up. Natural gas use, uh, all of that will be taxed. And because you need fossil fuels to transport goods and services, all those prices go up. Well, you need them to make the goods in the first place. Exactly. You need energy to make the goods and then energy to uh, transport the goods. Exactly. So that's the first reason. The second reason is if you thought global warming hysteria was bad before, wait till the coming year because it's shaping up the 2014 is going to be what, what these folks will call the hottest year ever on record. That actually, no, it's not the hottest year ever. It's the hottest year in the 130 years of comparable temperature data. Okay. Now, it's only one year. One year's meaningless. There's been an 18-year hiatus, right? But you can bet you're going to have the environmentalists, the United Nations, next year when they're trying to do their deal in Paris uh, on reducing emissions, we're going to have a year of hysteria about global warming because 2014 was the hottest year ever. And yet we'll get it from the same people who, had 2014 been a cold year, would say, well, that's just one year. That doesn't matter. Well, and that's, that's the correct thing. I mean, I mean, there is an underlying warming trend going on. There, there's no doubt about that. I think 14 of the last 15 warmest years in the 130 years of temperature data uh, have been since 2000. But, but, but the, the basic point is that we're going to get this constant presentation of it's going to be Al Gore on steroids. The world is facing an existential threat from global warming. It's not true. Global warming isn't an existential threat. So, so, but we're going to get all that kind of screaming and uh, yelling. Um, also, um, they've been like the, the the liberals themselves have been dropping hints. You saw that in the legislature where yeah. you're asked, "Are you going to do a tax?" The answer is yes or no. And so she goes with this convoluted thing. But they're also they, they're, they've been also hinting about joining a, a, a cap and trade system, which is another form of carbon tax. Uh, with, with Quebec and California. So there's something coming. And then the final thing is that, is that it's, a, it's a good time politically for them to do it because what's the, one of the most visible impacts of a carbon tax? Price of gasoline goes up. Well, yeah. a few months ago we were paying a buck 40 a liter for gas. Now we're paying 97 cents. Uh, people, I think, would go berserk if at $1.40 a liter you suddenly add 7 cents a liter, which is what a carbon tax might do. When it's 97 cents, it goes to $1.04. People aren't going to be happy, but you're not going to get the same outrage as you would. So for all those reasons, uh, I think the stars are aligning for the liberals to do it. Uh, by the way, just as an add-on, I'm just back from Texas. And if I take the U.S. gallon, 3.8 liters, do the conversion, 50 cents a liter. Yeah. No, well, they've always been much cheaper th yeah. than Well, they make it there. But you know what? We've got a lot of it here, too. Yeah, we make it here, too. And I, I think it would be nice if maybe we started thinking about refining um, here. That's a, that's a big issue. It's hard to find p uh, any community that wants refining. But certainly the price, um, uh, it, it, there's always been this huge uh, differential between Canada and the United States. All right. So um, if we get this um, carbon tax, when, when you price something, you base it on, it costs us this much to make it. It costs us this much to ship it. We can get the customer to pay this much. A lot of factors go into the pricing of a product. Mm -hmm. What factors 
that would uh, analogous factors would go into the pricing of a carbon tax? Well, or did they just pull a number out of the air? Well, the problem with any form of, of, of carbon pricing, whether it's carbon tax or cap and trade, is you don't really know uh, at what level um, you need to do it to do what you want, which is to reduce emissions. Uh, Norway's had a carbon tax since 1991. In 2002, Statistics Norway, the equivalent of Six Canada, assessed the carbon tax. It, well, no, it hasn't really um, uh, done anything uh, to lower emissions significantly. Europe's had a, had a cap and trade system, which is a stock market in emissions where the government issues permits. Um, and um, it, it, it hasn't lowered emissions. Uh, it's raised a lot of prices, particularly electricity. Uh, that's been the biggest one. And it's overrun with fraud. Right. Yep. But, but what you do, like what you would do is you would say, well, there, there, you, you would you basically price the cost of per ton of carbon dioxide emissions emitted into the atmosphere. Um, there are some regimes that use thirty dollars a ton, you know, 15, 40. All, that's basically what you do. OK, but, but, but wait a second. If those numbers are all over the place like that, that doesn't it doesn't that indicate what I was kind of driving at? They just make a number up. Well, of course, because this is really about money. It's not really about reducing emissions. Yeah, yeah. It, it's basically imposing a new charge on industry that it didn't have before. And, and one of the great dangers, if you do it um, in Canada uh, without being in lockstep with the United States, well, then you basically just put a burden on our industries that American industries don't have. And for all the praising of Obama that goes on by the Greens and the media, uh, he has not imposed a carbon tax in the United States. Uh, uh, they don't have a cap and trade system. And yet in Canada, we have two parties, the Liberals and the NDP, who are gung-ho to impose this new cost on our industry, uh, which will make them less competitive with their major competitors in the United States, a country with which we do what, 75 percent of our trade? I mean, it's economic madness. All right, but let me bring up my example of Texas again. When you see that kind of disparity between fuel prices and then you add a carbon tax in Ontario and not in Texas, and I'm trying to run a company in Ontario, why am I not saying to myself, I think I should go to Texas, if not China or Mexico? Well, that's, that's already happened. That, that's one of the main reasons that uh, the Ontario um, unemployment rate has been above the national unemployment rate since January 2007. Next uh, month, it'll be eight solid years. We have a higher unemployment rate than in the rest of Canada. That's one reason 300,000 manufacturing jobs ha have left because of the cost. Now, a lot of them left because of the cost of electricity. But basically, it's, it's you know, there's no free lunch. You can spin the numbers all you want. But basically, business looks at all of its costs. And if you keep adding new costs, they will look for jurisdictions where they can yeah. carry on more cheaply. Well, okay, but if they were leaving because of the cost of electricity, we're talking about power. That's got to be affected by carbon tax. I mean, um, we, we can't pull all of our electricity out of those windmills they stuck in southern Ontario. Well, what the Liberals would say to that is, aha, we've eliminated the use of coal, right? Yeah. Uh, the problem there is that, well, yes, you did. You eliminated the use of coal, but you didn't do it with what you told us you did it with, which was the wind and, and solar, in which we've wasted Billions of dollars. I mean, two Auditor General's reports have said, look, it's just been a disaster. They eliminated it using uh, hydro and, then, uh, and natural gas. They built a lot of natural gas plants, two of which they then uh, canceled yeah. in Oakville, Mississauga. It cost a lot of money. And, and with nuclear power. So, in other words, they could have gotten rid of coal without wasting the billions of our dollars they have for decades to come on wind and solar. You didn't need wind and solar at all. Um, the natural gas plants um, would, have, are, would have been used or will be used with wind and solar. Why? Because wind and solar can't deliver base load power to the grid on demand. Because wind doesn't always blow, sun doesn't always shine, right? Yep. So, in other words, the one thing they did that they boast about, which is that we eliminated the use of coal to fire electricity um, in Ontario, yeah, but you did it uh, by creating this huge boondoggle in wind and solar, which is getting worse and worse, as the Auditor Generals are telling us, more expensive, more debt, you didn't need any of that. You could have done it by upping your nuclear and your, nucle and your natural gas. And, and indeed, that's what they actually did. They, that, if you look at the actual numbers, right, what they actually did was they increased nuclear um, use and they increased natural gas use. And that's how they replaced coal, not with wind and solar. Well, um, you say that even though you could uh, attach common sense to this argument if you wanted to, uh, we're dealing with a government that is, in your words, in your column here, uh, being wrong, wasteful, incompetent, and politically corrupt has never stopped the liberals before, and it won't now. 
No, and uh, you know, in fairness, they won a majority government in June. Uh, Kathleen has a majority. She can do whatever she wants. It was an election. It wasn't a sneak attack. Yep. Uh, that's how democracy um, uh, works. Um, but but what we particularly see in, in the green energy file is they just keep doubling down. They just they make mistakes. They just double down on them. The um, the, the the current auditor general says you blew the smart meters program. The minister says, oh, it's complicated. You don't understand it, right? right. Before right. uh, when uh, before they won this election, they talked about being more reasonable, uh, meeting with the community on things like uh, wind power in particular, which has all of rural Ontario in an uproar. Um, nothing's changed. You know, uh, they haven't amended the Green Energy Act. Um, uh, wind developers can still come into communities, and basically the local councils and planning departments and and people are helpless uh, before them. They haven't changed any of that, uh, and the reason is. The whole experiment's been a disaster. Anyone who's looked at it, the former Auditor General Jim McCarter, the current Auditor General Bonnie Lissick, looking at various parts of how they're doing electricity and energy, comes away and says, this is a mess. You went in without a business plan. You, you went in without a, um, uh, a cost-benefit analysis. Um, uh, that happened on smart meters, happened on, on wind and, and solar, and the ministries respond, well, the, you know, the, we were responding to political instructions, right? Yeah. What amazes me is that they just keep doubling down on all the wrong things they've done. I guess they feel they're so far into it that, that to admit that they were wrong uh, is politically um, un unpalatable for them. But, but I, I've seldom seen a government so uh, knowing that what it's doing is a mess, just, just doing it over and over and over. It's sort of the definition of insanity. Yeah, you know, well, keep, keep doing it over and over. Expect different results. No, the results will be the same. We'll spend more money. We'll lose more businesses. Uh, prices will rise. Yeah, um, and, and we'll get reelected. And, and well, you know, four more years. They've yeah. got it. They've yep. got it.